But this week's going to be really fun because we get to talk about reproduction. In reproduction, we get to go back to our hypothalamic pituitary ax axes, um, the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, and we also get to talk about male and female anatomy. So we're going to do both those things this week. I'm going to start off with a review of the HPG pathway and both kind of in males and females, a generic version. Then we'll go into male and female specific anatomy and physiology and look at the HPG function as well in each of those separately because it works a little bit differently. So first you may remember this lovely picture where these large cells in the hypothalamus are producing, releasing hormones into this local capillary bed, this portal system. And in the case of what we're talking about this week, the hormone produced from these purple neurons is going to be gonadotropin releasing hormone, GNRH. It's going to cause the release of gonadotropin hormones. I believe actually that's what's going here. That's, that's blood vessels, sorry. So it's being released into this bloodstream and causing the release of gonadotropins, specifically, I'm gonna put gonadotropins for now. The next slide, I'll focus on what they are, but I just, I did it anyways, LH and FSH. Gonadotropins are going to target which ones of these target organs here? Here they are, right? Because they're going off into the bloodstream. They're being produced in these cells, but they're going off into the bloodstream, these gonadotropins, to target the gonads. Gonadotropins target the gonads, the ovaries, and testes. Both gonadotropins target both male and female gonads. So this is our HPG axis. I'm going to draw you a more specific one, um, getting a little bit more specific. So let's clear this and go to a blank slide here. Besides, I've drawn in, again, my GnRH producing neurons. And what's being released from here is going to be both LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. So um, these are going to act then, of course, on our gonads. I'm going to draw a big box down here to represent the gonads. LH, either in male or females, is going to act on other endocrine cells. Remember there's endocrine cells in the gonads. The ovaries and testes contain cells that produce hormones as well. These endocrine cells are going to do what? Well, what do endocrine cells do? They produce hormones. So they're going to produce steroid hormones. These are our sex, sex steroids. And they're also going to produce one peptide hormone called inhibin. This is a peptide. And I'm going to put sex steroids here just to, that's what I said before. Um, these hormones are both going to go have effects on the body. Um, effects on our secondary sex characteristics. So development and maintenance of breasts, facial hair in males, etc. They're also going to feed back to turn off this system here. Oops, that, that arrow should actually come from here. Let's do a dashed line, turning this stuff off. They're also going to circle these. They're going to also stimulate gamete production 
which is the other big thing besides hormone production that occurs in the gonads, right? Um, FSH is the other thing stimulating gamete production. I think that's it for now. The one, I say that and immediately, the one other thing is LH, um, I'm gonna actually draw it in a different color, in females only. So let's do pink, let's be sexist. It's not sexist, it's just societal norms, I guess. In females, LH also contributes to gamete production, actually ovulation itself. So this is kind of like a special thing here that we'll get to. Um, otherwise, this is our generic HPG axis, meaning this is applies to males or females. It's the similarities between the two. We'll break apart each one and look at each separately, but then come back to this um, because what we'll look at separately will fit into this box, right? Of follicle stimulating hormone, stimulating gamete production, LH stimulating endocrine cells. But then of course we've got some complexities here because the horm these hormones basically do a lot. And, and that makes sense, right? These are sex steroids released into the blood, um, testosterone, estrogens, the progesterones that just are gonna bind to a lot of receptors, a lot of places. Those receptors include organs of the body, right? That, that are gonna have sec result in secondary sex characteristics, the gametes themselves and to feedback there. So widespread effects.